Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. As promised, I reprinted our model and then I reprinted it again. So as you can see, I've done a couple little upgrades. The model looks a little bit thick just because there is a lot of extra goopy resin on top. So let me clean up quick and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, this is my ultrasonic cleaner. We've got this filled with, well, it's not filled, half filled with 99% uh, IPA. After some extensive research on the YouTubes, they say this is one of the easiest ways to clean your parts after doing a, a resin print. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our model. I'm just going to kind of clean up some of the little puddles on the platform here. Make sure we don't drip on the floor. Comes with one of these little plastic spatulas with the printer. Or spatula might be the wrong word. Scraper. And you usually just try to ease up a corner. Usually once you get one corner, you can kind of work your way around. Whoop, there we go. Didn't have to work our way around. I used a different slicer program this time, so you can see that these are squares instead of circles, so it's sticking a lot better. Just gonna grab some of the supports here and we're just gonna plop her in. To about eight minutes. And we're just gonna run it. And these ultrasonic cleaners normally used for carburetor parts, stuff like that. So it does have a heating option on one side. We're using alcohol, so we're not gonna be turning the heat on this time anyways. Really handy, it's got a little digital timer and it'll just shut off when it's done. These are pretty affordable, these little cleaners. This one I think is around $40 US. I paid a little bit more being in Canada, but for 40 bucks, I mean, it's all stainless. You can't go wrong. You could probably warm up some dinner in it if you needed to. Cook some bachelor raviolis in the old ultrasonic cleaner. That's something we could try out one episode maybe. And you might think it's not doing much, Normally when I put parts in, I'll drop them in the center and it'll just push them to the outside. There's so much agitation happening on an ultrasonic level. So I'm just going to let this do its thing and uh, we'll come back and go to the next step. This comes with a basket that fits inside here, but I don't use it because the lid and the basket don't fit well together. So I'd rather have a good secure lid than have a half secure lid and a basket. So I just use tweezies. Now what we have here is a little UV oven for curing fancy fingernails at the salon. You just here put your hand in and then you can talk about your day. These are pretty cheap as well. So this coil you're seeing is actually on the top up here. So this bottom base is just a mirror so you can cure the underside of your nails or whatever too. As you can see I did some upgrades. Check it out. We got curtains. I got closed curtains over here. I did a little panel, a little square panel here for you know like utilities or propane or something like that. Got a curtain in the back. We got to trim out a little piece of a support right there. Even have some kind of toolboxes back here. I'm not sure how well they're going to detail though. More curtains, more closed curtains, and then the jimmy. Then we got an AC unit on the top, upgraded. So I'm really feeling that. So right now this is not cured. It's, it's hard. It's pretty tough, but it's not cured the whole way. Since our piece is super heavy, we don't necessarily need cutters. A lot of these you can just break off. If you have some very fragile model, like our last attempt, then maybe use the cutters the whole way. But I've done this a couple times now, so especially on this exact model. So I'm just going to start cutting some of these. As you can hear, they're super fragile. They're very, very brittle. Comes off pretty easy. Just gonna try to get this off of here. Okay. 
Cool. There's our camper. Pimp. So just move all this over to the side and I'm gonna put this in the little oven here. Try to find one that has like an off and on switch because it gets kind of annoying coming back and running and hitting the button for another 60 seconds all the time. So I might have to do some trickery with this wiring and just take these little uh, infrareds and make them perma on. Okay, I let this cure for a while and this is where we are at. Not quite sure why our siding bulged a little bit here, but that's okay. It's gonna make it more realistic. Might be a good place for a stripe to start. Possibly, I did it on both sides. So something in my, uh, something in my file affected that. So like I said, I ended up doing three prints. As our first print, wall's too thin. Very thin. Second print, walls beefed up. Wrong supports. Supports were too light. The bottom started mushing out. And then third attempt, the body ended up perfect. But we could use a little bit more supports downstairs here. Since they're so easy to remove, I have no problem absolutely loading them up under there going forward. So that was a, you know, a nice little learning experience for me. Oh, I guess you guys want to see it in the truck, right? Pretty good fitment. Pretty good fitment. Not too bad. I think next time around I might make the sleeper a little bit taller. Might be a little bit unrealistic at that point there. And I'm going to try to make it wider. I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but usually the overhang on the sides is like quite a bit more. It's usually like out here and you got room for jacks and everything. So put that into consideration for the next time we do one of these. Back looks pretty good. You can still see the license plate. That sounds pretty cool. Pretty cool little model for sure. Anyways. I like it. I like it. But we could definitely improve on the design. So we're going to let this dry completely let this water get out of here and we'll get it in the paint booth and get some color on it oh and one more thing I wanted to show you I designed winch bumpers and winch combos this is the very first print I did on my photon so we might put a winch bumper winch package on the front of this and turn it into a whole camping 4x4 off-road hunting truck if you know what I mean Super cool. Now we can detail the winch separately from the bumper and take it to a next level. And then slap this baby on the front of here. It's going to be so cool. All right, here comes our first stripe. It's going to be the dark metallic brown, the same thing that we got going on on the Ford. So we're going to marry this camper to that Ford now that it's going to be matchy matchy. It's going to be worth it though, anyways. Whoops a daisy, I forgot to hit record. Just in time. I was just I was just talking about how this Createx paint is doing a really good job. Sticking to this resin. No primer. Nice crispy classic line. Look at that. Hell yeah. Gonna give this a few minutes to dry and then uh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do a lighter color brown stripe up top to really tie the room together. And we'll see about doing some chrome trim and detailing up our curtains and things. Okay.
That's it, that's all. Classic. Gonna let this dry. We're gonna try to detail up these little curtains a little bit. Do some trims on this thing, tail lights, etc. And hopefully we can slap it on the truck. Awesome. I like these little pumper pens, they're kind of useful. It's looking pretty good. Really wanted to do a pattern on these curtains, but I don't know, I'm kind of chickening out. Chickening out, man. Definitely got to be mismatched curtains. All right, I'm stopping there before I get too far off the beaten path here. I'm not any kind of weathering master, so we're going to just stop and get it on the truck, get this video finished. So let's have a look-see. Check it out. I think that looks pretty darn good coming out of a printer. I got her winch on. <laughs> Look at that thing. I wish I owned this. I wish this was my truck in like real life because I would 100% drive that bad boy every day. I love it. This turned out really good. I didn't have any thread that was fine enough to do a hook. It would have been like a big, it would have looked like a big rope. So I'll think about that in the future. Um, any of these little parts I make, I am going to make available to you guys who just download for free you can print out whatever you want uh, I just have to get some finishing touches on some stuff make sure the the files are nice and they're ready to print and I will start posting a link in my description where they're going to be available Thingiverse probably um, it won't be there in this video but I'll try to get it up as soon as I can so yeah that winch is really cool let's get a let's get a little close up on that bad boy It definitely gets the job done. Let's see this little camper. I don't know, those windows. <laughs> I really struggled trying to make. I really wanted like patterned crappy curtains, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Oh, what's this on the side of the truck? I got some paint or something on the side of there. I'll have to clean that up. Overall, I think the little camper turned out pretty good. Pretty good. Anyways, that's all for today, guys. I'm not sure what's coming up next, but I will, uh, well, you'll just find out, I guess. So, uh, see you in the next one. <coughs> <coughs>